All right, everyone, we have one last Odin Customs knife in right now. Not saying it's going to be the last Odin Custom knife I ever do because, well, I hope that's not the case because he's cranking out some amazing stuff. And I know Anthony, who owns this one, I'm sure we'll be getting some more. And there is a fixed blade that Jim is making, Kyle. Um, and I would love to check out the fixed blade. Jim, Anthony, somebody, just, just so you know. So I kind of put a pairing together today because this is a beautiful, amazing looking Timascus scaled Spartacus. With a liner lock to give you as much possible Timascus as you can get. And I thought that paired really well with the Olight uh, I3T in Timascus and the Zelo Swordfish that I also have in Timascus. And I've done a video on this watch before, and you can see it's full on Timascus case and bezel. And it's a pretty cool micro brand, micro brand watch. And I think it does go really well with this knife. So I think it's a really good pair. And because we are goofy watch and knife enthusiast addicts, whatever you want to call us, at least me, I like to kind of match my watch to my knife, to my flashlight, to my pen sometimes. It all kind of depends, right? Heck, I may even be fancy and pull out a hank from Everyday Hanks. Sherry is awesome. Go check her out. I'll put a link to her channel, her website down below. It makes amazing Hanks. So sometimes you get really fancy and you want to just match everything, which I think is cool. People look at me strange sometimes. Okay. When I say people, I mean my girlfriend. She's like, really? I'm ready to go. You're still picking out what knife to go with, which socks, with which watch. Yeah, chill. Hold on. How long have, how many times have I waited for you? All right, I digress. Let's get back to this really cool Spartacus that Anthony designed. Um, it was another book order. He kind of went opposite of this fancy yet plain or plain but fancy Spartacus. So he really wanted to contrast that. So this is a monochrome Timascus. And this one is a full-on Timascus. Because it's been heated and colorized. This one has a liner lock. So as not to interrupt the scale with a cutout for the lock bar. So I think that's super smart. And I know the lighting sometimes you can't see. But you get the idea. I like a liner lock for a number of reasons. One, it keeps the show side and the scale side or the show side and the lock side uniformed, right? They look the same. Whereas here, it kind of breaks it up and it, and it looks different. I also like a liner lock a lot because it doesn't matter how you grab it. There is no lock bar pressure issues from the backside. Some knives, if you grab it wrong and you, let's say you put some extra pressure here because of the way you're grabbing it, it's going to affect the way that it flips open, potentially. Every knife is a little bit different, a little bit, uh, you know, quirkiness to them. And so I like a liner lock for that reason. Some people will say the liner lock is not as strong of a lock as a frame lock because you have just a small little piece of, uh, I believe, titanium in this case. Certainly Timascus in this case. Timascus in this case. You know, but you have a smaller, thinner material there than a full-on frame lock. If you are doing something where you're concerned that the blade is going to close on you because you are using it in a hard manner, 
No problem with that. Use your knives the way you want. But if you're concerned about that aspect, it's time to grab a fixed blade. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, yes, lock fail is a thing and some, some knives, and I have owned some knives, that the lock has failed and it became a slip joint. Um, but if you're concerned about that happening, pick up a fixed blade for whatever task you're doing. That's all. So I'm not going to go into all of the specs on this guy because I've done a couple of Spartacus videos already and I'll put a link to the Odin's playlist. But I wanted to talk more about Jim's ability to make a knife. It's great. He's a new maker. Go watch my live stream. You'll get the whole uh, picture. But so I have seen him evolve over time. I had one of his very first prototype ones for a while. And I can see that the quality of these other ones that have just been made recently in the last six months, it's improved. Is there room for improvement? Sure. Is there room for improvement for a lot of makers that have been doing it for 5, 10, 15 years? Yes, you can always improve. So this is a low-layer Nichols Armor Core Damascus. Now, Kyle and Jim, Kyle, it's the same guy. Watch the live stream, you'll understand. So that's why I use the name interchangeably sometimes. Jim picked out this material. Anthony, the owner, picked out this dark Tymascus with the liner lock. The pivot, the pivot collars, the pocket clip, that's all barked, kind of matte finished zirconium. We talked about that in the last video uh, when I talked about this guy and why matte finished zirconium is better. So go check out that video. Um, yeah. I don't love the liner lock on this particular one. I think it could, there could be a little more access to it. Sometimes it's a little bit tough to get. You kind of got to dig your finger in a specific way for me and my thumb. Maybe I got fat thumbs. So I don't love that aspect of it. And another little, again, we're nitpicking here, where the screw holes are for the backspacer. Oh, the backspacer is also zirconium. They're right at the very edge. I almost wish they were down into the meat a little bit more because you can kind of, as you run your finger across the top, you can kind of feel the screw heads. They kind of bubble just a hair over the Tymascus. Same with the spacers there on the floating backspacer. So that's where I say there are some very minor personal details that I might change and make it a little better. But again, guys, I try not to be too critical because I'm not a designer. I'm not an engineer um, in this regard. Like, I don't know. I'm not a guy. Like, I don't make this stuff. I just talk about them. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So I can, no, I'm just kidding. Some of you probably don't even get that joke. Kyle can do some great things. And I think if you are of the mindset of picking your materials, picking your design, saying you want some copper in your blade, you want some wrought iron in your blade, you want colored Timascus, you want black and white Timascus, you know, if you've got some ideas... Jim's an amazing guy that can make those ideas come to life for you. And there's other models, as you'll see in the Odin's playlist. There's a lot of other shapes and sizes and models for you to choose from if you want to go down that road. I think it's very cool. I think he does an amazing job. And he's a super cool guy. Of course, he's super cool because he came on a live stream with me and Alex on his Sunday afternoon for Sunday evening for him uh, and just kind of 
chatted with us for an hour and a half, almost two hours, I think, by the time we were done. And uh, so I do greatly appreciate that too. So of course he's a great guy because he donated two hours of his time to chat with us. So go check him out. I'll put the playlist up here. I'll put the live stream over there. Have a great day.